have in this case is two young women uh, students in a high school hallway. They were about to get into a fight. Noe broke up the fight. Um, he was holding one of the young ladies back. You can see that clearly on the videotape we obtained. He calms down the fight. He does what we want our young men to do when they see a fight between two young women. Break it up. The fight is calmed down. Everything is just going according to plan in the hallway. People are walking back and forth. And then you see these two police officers walk up. They walk up behind him. No, he's just standing there. They move him to the wall of the hallway. And in a matter of about five seconds, move him to the center of the hallway. This officer, Randy McMillan, has his taser out. He tases Noe. Noe clearly was not fighting them. He had no weapon. He was not being aggressive. Noe gets tased, goes unconscious, and literally, and you can see it in the video, goes straight back and hits his head square on the concrete. Um, he is rushed to in Austin Hospital, and he is placed in a coma, a medically induced coma, for 52 days. Almost two months, he was unconscious in a coma. He had brain surgery? He had, he had two brain surgeries. And so it is the most horrific injury I have seen in 10 years of practicing personal. Well, was it a serious subdermal hematoma? Yes. Yes. And by the grace of God and the great medical care at this hospital, he pulled through it. But he is completely different. The road back is going to be a long one, as you know. We have some photos of that we can put up on screen as well. We just showed the video. Right. And so it's horrific. And what I find most disturbing is when these shootings occur or taserings occur, the government always comes out and they have a narrative. And in this case, it is no different. They said initially, no, he was fighting and they were trying to control him. Yeah, that's what I'm sick of is the lying. It's like the guy they have in the handcuffs in San Francisco who done nothing and they kill him and then say he attacked them. Right. And that's what happened here. And so as someone that handles these cases, I was just waiting. I knew there was a video. We had eyewitnesses saying, no, he was not fighting. But you never know until you see this video. And then you see the video and you're like, wow, he was doing nothing wrong and he got tased. And I think that um, it was horrific. I think it needs to be treated as a criminal act. Uh, the well, watching the video, I was about to say, uh, the police officer's in a stance of almost enjoyment when he does it, spreading his legs out, you know, getting in a stance. So it doesn't look, look like it was an accident. And, 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 they've, and they've said it wasn't an accident, that he was basically being combative. Right. They, Which they, isn't true. 100% not true. And you his hands are at video. his side, they push him over, and they just taser him for fun. And not only his hands were at his side, when you meet this young man, he is about 5'6", 140 pounds soaking wet. You have two grown adult police officers who are trained. They look like big guys. Big guys, especially his partner. Really, why, really tough. Why don't this. you just grab him? Why don't you grab him? Why are you tasering him? I mean, I will tell you myself, I could have grabbed this kid and held him. And, and that's where it gets into this issue of why are teenagers being tased in a high school hallway? Well, they're using it for control. Police, they've had cases, as you know, where they taser you to make you answer questions or to give a urine sample. And judges say, no, you're allowed to torture pain compliance. They call it pain compliance, uh, where they break the abortion protesters' arms with nunchucks. You seen that video? And the, and, and the federal court said, no, that's pain compliance. So this is really what it is. All of America is becoming an Abu Ghraib. But there is, without question, a militarization of the police force in the United States. And when you have these officers with tasers, tasers are very, very dangerous weapons. Let's be Well, honest. you're being an extremist. Why didn't they just kill him? Because, I mean, I mean, obviously, if you're going to taser him and have him try to kill him, why not just start executing people if their hat's on wrong? Well, it's going to be curious to see what they say under oath about it. Because what can they say? Are they going to say we felt in danger? Are they going to say that we were being attacked? They can't say that. And so what you're hearing now is he disobeyed orders. What orders could he have possibly disobeyed in a span of three to five seconds that justified being tased like this? I think it's a horrific display of excessive. I want to skip this network break. This is so important. Art Aceveda, back in, um, I think it was like July of last year. I'm going to get him back on soon. He says he's coming in. He was on the local 590 with Sergeant Sam and those guys uh, here, here on KLBJ, the station the president formerly owned. And he was openly saying, quote, and I'll never forget it, because they played it later on another show, quote, if a police officer gives you an order, even if it's a wrong order, you follow it and you won't get hurt. Well, they've had cops pull women over the drive out of topless bars and they demand oral sex. Should they do that? If a cop wants me to mow their lawn, should I do that? If they want to bust in my house without a warrant, should I let them? No. All the common law and the courts have said, no, you have a right to resist that. 
But here's this new doctrine where you see the deaf people all the time uh, or, or the autistic, clearly autistic, being attacked because they didn't mind an order. You know, you walk up behind a deaf person and say, halt, halt. They don't, so they shoot them or tase them. Or the Chinese guy in New York, you know, where they beat him up for jaywalking because they said stop and he didn't know what that meant behind him. I mean, it's this thing, you didn't follow my order, so I'm going to kill you. How about we all just wear, like the running man, a necklace around us with a bomb where if we don't obey an order, they just detonate it and blows our head off. I think that's a good point. I think that when you talk about constitutional rights and civil rights, it's real easy for people to say, oh, I like free speech. But where the rubber hits the road is really the Fourth Amendment. And that is the right to be free from excessive force. You are correct. We are not in a militarized country, or we should not be in a militarized country. We are. We're in an occupied country. Though. Well, that's you know that's uh, obviously up for debate. But, but what do you say and to Arde Saavedra in the statement that do what you're told and you won't get hurt? I mean, that sounds like the, the creed of gangsters and dictators. I think there's a big problem with certain members of law enforcement that feel that they are the judge, jury, and executioner. There's no question about that. I've seen that in police cases. I've seen cover-ups occur after these things have happened. And I think we're seeing this in this case. Why can't they just be honest and say they made a mistake here? They shouldn't have tased this young man. And I think the fact, they won't even admit that. And they put out this nonsense that, oh, he had a prior head injury, is just indicative of a culture that they feel they cannot admit they do wrong. And, it, and then it gets worse, statistically. Less police are being killed statistically, but more people are dying at the hands of police because they're all training with instinctive shooting to just start shooting at the drop of a hat. And it's it's really scary. Now you have the state police doing proctology cavity searches uh, on the side of the highways. I mean, this the foreigners won't come here in major studies. We're losing $40 billion a year in tourism. USA Today reported a few years ago because people are scared to come here. Just like I won't go to Mexico because of the police, people won't come here now. I think it's a much bigger problem than people are acknowledging. And it's very easy to sit back and say, oh, that's going to happen to someone else's child or someone else's husband. But this young man comes from a very good family. He has no criminal record. This was that other child, and that could be your child. And I think that it's very important that we talk about these issues and try to make this thing right. Well, it's just amazing that it's gotten to this point. Uh, break down more of the case, because I followed on the news. I followed you on the news. And, and, and them not wanting to release the video at first and saying that he basically resisted them or attacked them. And then, of course, now the video shows they've, they've lied. Uh, this is why the police are losing their credibility. Well, I think that that's a good point. I think that what's interesting to me is right before the video came out, there was the head of a state police union named Kevin Lawrence that went on the local channel here and said, oh, I heard that Noe had some headaches the week before. They started floating this out that he had a brain injury apparently a week before as if a 17 year old was wandering around with a brain bleed and just coincidentally, coincidentally, the day he got tased and was rushed to the hospital, that has nothing to do with the tasing, it's a prior injury. That is obviously completely false and again, Watch the narrative in these cases. When they start talking about these phantom prior injuries or that he reached for a gun that he didn't have in other cases I've handled, that's when you know the police know they've done wrong. Well, in the case of Kelly Thomas, I'm sure you followed that, mm -hmm. just screaming for daddy, begging for, you know, and then being tortured to death. It took him, what, four days to die in the hospital. And when you look at the photograph, the, the mugshot of these police officers, I mean, talk about just absolute thug central types. And then you look at the fact that the you know, father of this guy was a retired police officer. He said they got away with murdering my son and the mother of police uh, you know, was also saying basically the same thing. They claimed, oh, he might have had a heart condition before because his heart was so bruised from the beating and all the rest of it and his rib cage being rammed in on it. And then they used that and the jury cowardly, probably out of fear uh, of, the, of the gangsters, then found them not guilty. I mean, that, that is such a disgraceful jury. And the culture of endorsing whatever the police do is absolutely going to empower our downfall. And that's, it's always ironic to me that our friends on the right wing um, are so anti-government. They, they don't like the government. They're anti-government, limited government. But yet, but yet, when the government kills someone, the reflexive reaction is, oh, they, they did the right thing there. We need to support whatever the police do. That's a paradox there. If you're skeptical of the government, you should be even more skeptical when they kill someone, or in this case, when they seriously hurt someone. And I think it's a real blind spot that most Americans have that must be addressed.
Well, exactly. But what it comes down to, policing is a tough job. I wouldn't want it. And they, and they get burnout, they get PTSD, and it's the culture of, hey, we're going to make mistakes, so stop trying to put us in jail for it or we can't do this job. And everybody gives the police more leeway, but it's now been abused, and they've now been federalized and globalized and militarized, and they're doing SWAT raids over, you know, unreturned library books in Williamson County, literally. Uh, and so... You know, that's not the case. It, it, it's been the, this entitlement, this empowerment. What do you think as a guy that you know, gets a lot of these high-profile cases all over Texas, where do you think this is going? Because clearly the public's turning against the police. That's just what the social engineers want because then it's a us-against-them mentality. How do we reach out to police? How do we reverse this militarization and bring them back to being more honorable peace officers? Well, I think that it's it's honestly shows like this. It's discussing this issue. It's having a discussion about it. And then it's really urging the elected officials, specifically district attorneys, to hold these people responsible when they do something like this. When you're looking at Austin... This district attorney here, Rosemary Lindbergh, has never indicted a police officer for killing someone. And I'm not even saying convict him. I'm saying indict him. Let a jury decide if this was a criminal act. When you look at these police shootings, and even in this case, we'll see what happens, but district attorneys will not indict these police officers. And what my point always is, mm -hmm. let's put it in front of a criminal jury and let the jury decide. And if they issue not guilty, they issue not guilty. But it's the behind closed doors sure. decisions that are very scary. Well, uh, there was a CIA section chief, I think his name was uh, Carnival, or not, it was about four years ago, I forget his name, it'll pop my head in a minute, in Houston, and they pull him over, they get him out of the car, he's got his hands at his side, and the cops execute him. It's all on chopper. And of course, th that was a hit team, they were ordered to kill him. We know he was a real CIA guy, he'd gone rogue or something, they have that in bigger departments, they have federal hit teams, that's, that's come out on record. They clearly execute him, there wasn't even an investigation. So my issue is if the order comes down, I guess, to pull me over and kill me, it won't even matter if it's on video. I could get out naked with no weapon. They'll just say, oh, I had a lightsaber. You know, they'll say I had a particle beam. They'll say I had a bomb. It's this thing of on video, they're killing people, and they always get caught lying even though they knew they were on video. Right. They said uh, that De Rivera, uh, you know, basically resisted and attacked them. He's clearly standing there. He stops the fight. They direct him. He's totally calm. He turns around, they taser him. Right. I mean, this is this is so obvious, and it's the lying. I mean, if they'd have said, well, you know, we thought he was going to do something, so we tasered him, or I accidentally tasered him, or whatever, or I don't, no, it's the lying, and then they're getting away with it. I mean, I hope they don't get away with it. What should happen? What are you asking for? What's going on with your lawsuit? Well, we, we would like the district attorney in Bastrop, and we now have the U.S. attorney uh, for the federal level. We are asking them to do a criminal investigation. And I feel, on behalf of the family, this was a criminal act. I think there should be an indictment. The lying's a criminal act. I think there's a lot of things that will come out once we get more into the lawsuit about what happened in the 24 hours after this happened. I am certain that the police tried to control the narrative with the help of the school district. And we will see once we get these emails, once we get the communications, a lot of stuff went on of trying to sell people. Isn't that a criminal uh, conspiracy to obstruct justice and racketeering? Without question. It's a, it's a deprivation of civil rights. So we will see where that goes. Um, but at this so point... So it's a conspiracy to suppress his civil rights. I, I think there's no question. I think when you have... And we will see what the evidence shows, but there's a lot of suspicious things that occurred after this incident. I do not believe the school called EMS quickly enough. There was about a two-hour gap. Oh, um, my God. And we need to know. Two-hour gap. Right. And there was the plea. Well, the, soon they'll just start warehousing the kids till they die. And if they don't, maybe just. It, it was a horrific, horrific reaction. Wait a minute. Two hours they waited? Right. There should have been an ambulance there in 10 minutes. Right. And they had, they had moved him to a nurse's office and... Oh, just hoping he got better. Right. What uh, As he was bleeding out of his ears. That, oh, oh my God, this just got 10 times worse. Right. Oh, now you've got them literally refusing medical aid. In a, what, did they just hope he died or what was... We'll see. It was very bad. In bleeding a, from his ears. Right.
It was very bad, and I'm certain that the police tried to control the narrative about what happened very quickly, and we're confident we will be able to show that. I'm surprised they didn't just take him behind closed doors and claim he got up and attacked him and then, you know, shoot him a couple times. I've seen that happen in other cases, but thank you. Well, why not just put there. nooses in at the school and they can just hang whoever they want? Because <clears throat> it is an execution center. We'll be right back with attorney Adam Lowy. This is an incredible case, and it could happen to you and cops. It could happen to your kids. It probably will. We're on the